Inside the Vandals is brought to you by the School of Journalism and Mass Media and by the Coeur d'Alene Casino, Hotel, Spa, and Resort. Welcome to Inside the Vandals, brought to you by the Coeur d'Alene Casino, Hotel, and Resort. I'm Braden Kane. And I'm Zach Kellogg. The women on the road this past week picking up a couple wins. The men playing here at home, their final two home games of the season, picking up a win against Sacramento State, snapping a 14-game losing streak. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the show. Yeah, great for the men to pick up that win, but the women, like you said, two wins on the road against a tough Portland State team and a scrappy Sacramento State team on their senior night. I had the chance to sit down with head coach John Newley to discuss those wins, along with looking ahead to tonight's game against Weber State. Now joined by head coach John Newley. Coach Newley, thank you for joining us again. All right, thanks for having me. All right, so two more wins on the road this weekend, but first, now officially, <laughs> Michaela Friends, the all-time leading scorer in Big Sky history. Now that she now finally holds that record, possibly for years to come, I mean, just is it just an amazing accomplishment to have one of your players now progressing all the way to being the all-time leader in history for Yeah, Big Sky. you know, you never know when you recruit kids and bring them in and, and how their careers are going to go. Um, certainly had high expectations for Michaela, um, and she has exceeded every one. To become the all-time leading scorer in a great league like the Big Sky, it, it's an unbelievable achievement and, and something, uh, you know, I am certainly proud for her and proud of her, and she should be uh, the rest of her life. And now, uh, last weekend, first up, you guys had Portland State on the road. You guys were pretty in control for that game. Portland State made some runs now and then. Um, is that kind of a good win to have before the tournament? Like, you guys just kind of execute on everything you needed to do and just kind of held that constant lead through the game? Yeah, it was huge. Um, game of runs, for sure. I uh, loved our start. Got out to a great start. You know, they kind of caught us. We made uh, a couple other bigger runs during the game. But it was a championship atmosphere. They had a record crowd. Uh, they were loud and uh, the intensity was off the charts. And then now transitioning to Sacramento State, that one was a lot different game. You guys really had to grind that one out. Um, shots weren't really falling, but you guys still found a way to win. Is that kind of another example of you guys wanting to get one of those wins, you have to grind it out, do everything you can, and still be able to pull it out on the road? Yeah, it definitely is the word to use was grind, and, and it was. You know, it's kind of a trap game. There was a lot of emotion in the Portland State game. You know, it was for first place. They were right behind us. You know, we put a lot into that. And then, uh, you know, you'd go play a team you would beat 104 to 66 at home. You know, um, you know, I'm saying we walked in there thinking we we're going to win. But and by the same token, we didn't have that same intensity level we had Thursday until, you know, push came to shove then the second half. And we really had to ramp things up. And I think we learned a lesson from that. And then your seniors, Friends and Pierce, stepping up big in the last minute, in the last few seconds of that game. Friends knocking down the three. Pierce going to line to knock down the free throws. Um, How does it feel to have your seniors kind of doing they're doing their entire career, coming through clutch and giving you guys wins? Yeah, um, you know, I have full confidence in both of them at the end of games. Either one, you know, could have, could have drawn the play up for either one of them. And uh, either one can step up and make those free throws. So it's nice for me to have those options at the end of a game. And so now going on, or now coming back home against Weber State, although they are last in the Big Sky on a six-game losing streak, they are very good defensively in the top half of the Big Sky. What do you guys need to do to try and figure, that, figure them out at defense or offensively again like you guys, you guys did the first time down in Ogden? Yeah, it was a tough game down there. I mean, it was so long ago, um, you know, geez, what, two months ago at least. But, uh, you know, they're very athletic at every spot. They're a very physical basketball team. They're going to hold you, grab you, and do whatever they can get away with. And we're going to have to fight through that and do a better job than we did at SAC with that kind of same defense um, and really push through physically to be ready for these guys. And then for Weber State, kind of like you brought up against SAC, uh, although they are kind of at the bottom of the rankings, you guys need to make sure you come in sharp. We need to tell your team anything to make sure, like, hey, no, no games are gimmies in this league. We need to try and come out and execute. Well, I think that's something we did learn at SAC, and I think they're going to understand that. Um, there's a lot to play for this week for us, and they have to understand we got to defend our home floor. And like you said, they, they may be at the bottom right now, but they, they beat Northern Colorado in Greeley. <laughs> which yeah. is something we couldn't do. So uh, I think we all understand that they have talent and they're capable of, of uh, beating us. All right, Coach Newley, thank you for joining us and best of luck for you guys against Wildcats. All right, thanks. And now to take a closer look at Michaela Friends and Taylor Pierce ahead of their last week in Cowan Spectrum. With senior night looming, Michaela Friends knows that Saturday's matchup will be an emotional one that will feel a little bit different. It's always been about having fun for me and I think I used to be kind of a stoic player. I just wouldn't really show any emotion, but then I got here and I was having so much fun and uh, I just can't help but smile when Taylor hits a big shot or something cool happens. It's just so fun and I see how excited everyone on the bench gets. And Part of that emotion stems from Saturday being the last home game she'll play with her best friend, Taylor Pierce. 
we're best friends. I mean, off the court, on the court, I think it's kind of obvious when you watch us play that we have a lot of fun together. And you spend so much time together, how do you not become best friends? Even if neither player knows who is going to take that final shot on senior night. Ooh, I haven't even thought about that. We might have to compete for that one. <laughs> We've kind of, Taylor and I have taken on the leadership role this year and feel really close with this team and I think we've kind of established something nice and kind of hoping that they learn something from us. But perhaps no one's been more pivotal to Michaela's success than her head coach John Newley, a father figure for Michaela. He's meant a lot to me. Uh, he's kind of like a second dad, honestly. Just last summer I was in a car accident and him and coach uh, were the first ones to the hospital so it just shows how close they are and how much they care about us as not just players but as people and I just really appreciate everything he's done for me. I mean he's made me such a great player but an even better person. Um. Honestly, I think for a while I didn't really know my role, but um, coach made it very clear. You know, you're here to shoot the ball. Clock winding down. Pops the ball into the air. Ball is loose. Pierce gets it back. He's up with three. Oh my gosh! You've got to be. I think I just want to be remembered as a great teammate. Um, yeah, like records are cool and stuff, but I want to be remembered for helping the younger guys grow and be more confident in themselves. Like Michaela, Taylor admires the friendship that's blossomed between the two standouts over the last four years. Michaela means a lot more to me. She's not just a teammate. Um, I think last year, the team culture, there was just so much love on the team. We all care so much about each other as people. Our connection has grown so much, and but she means so much to me as a friend. Um, I feel so lucky to have met her. But maybe nothing would mean more to Taylor than to be able to share her experiences of March Madness with the younger players on the team. We've had that taste of it since freshman year. We haven't gotten back, and I think our motivation has only grown. And as much as last year it was difficult to walk away, you know, losing in the championship game, it's motivation for the entire summer, for every single practice, um, especially for the younger guys to see what that feels like and to know that that's what this program is for. We win championships here, um, and they, they deserve to feel that too. Don't want it to end, but I think I'm going off on a high note, and that's pretty awesome. At Coeur d'Alene Casino, our renovation is nearly complete, and we're rocking a new look. And you can too, because on Saturday, March 30th, you can win a share of $10,000 extra play cash or $60,000 in cash and home renovation prizes. You'll earn entries in March just by playing with your core rewards card. Yep, we'll be rocking a new look soon, and your home can be too. So come and play, only at Coeur d'Alene Casino. See Core Rewards booth for details. Welcome back to Inside the Vandals and Brayden, as you saw going into the break, the Splash Sisters leaving the program, Michaela Friends and Taylor Pierce, hard to fill those shoes once they're going to be gone, but what they've been able to do here as Vandals is just simply amazing. Mm -hmm. And congratulations to Michaela and Taylor on all their accomplishments they've had while playing for Idaho right here in Moscow. But the men had their last two home games of the year this past week. They played Portland State and Sacramento State, beating Sacramento State Saturday night, snapping a 14 game losing streak. I had the chance to sit down with Coach Don Berlin to discuss those games and look ahead to this week's road matchups. Welcome to Inside the Vandals. We were supposed to have Coach Berlin today, but something came up in his schedule. So we are joined by Assistant Coach Tim Murphy. Coach, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. All right. We're going to start off uh, this interview with just an evaluation of these last two games, considering some of the things that the team's been trying to work on this year, rebounding, turnovers, defense. Kind of just tell me um, how the team played these last two games. Well, you know, it was nice to, to have a good game at Southern Utah a couple weeks ago. And uh, we played hard, and I thought we brought that to uh, – you know, this court um, for the last two games. I, I, that's the, been the key all year long with our guys is just to, to, to play harder and play with intensity, play with some passion. And I thought our guys brought it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of physicality, it seems like that could have been the emphasis in the Portland State game defensively. You guys held them to 36% shooting. You guys were only shooting 38%, so it was really a key for that game. Comments on the defense in the Portland State game? Well, you know, our focus going into that game was just to 
contain their penetration because that's all they do is just they, they attack the rim and if you help then they throw it out to shooters and they've been shooting the ball really well um, but I think our, our guards did a great job of just containing them and not letting them just get right to the rim um, and so that that really helped our defense overall um, you know Woods is a really good player and if you allow him to get into the restricted arc and uh, spray it out to shooters, he's tough to guard because he's going to score his points in there, plus he's going to get other people points. And I think we did a great job of making him take, uh, you know, pull-up jumpers. So for the Sacramento State game this past Saturday, kind of the opposite, the offense was just firing on all cylinders. Definitely your guys' best offensive output for this season. Comments on uh, the offensive play for that game? Complete surprise. It really was. I mean, from what they did to us the first game down there where we scored 48 points, um, they were physical. They bumped us out of all of our cuts. Uh, and our, our young puppies just weren't prepared for that. Uh, but they were prepared for this one. And, uh, and I, th I thought our guys really played hard, um, screened hard, even though, you know, we, I think we, Jared had a couple of illegal screens. Scott may have had one. Um, but that's what you have to do. You just got to keep maintaining what you do and, uh, and, and show some physicality back. And uh, I thought we matched their, their intensity. Mm -hmm. We'll switch gears now. Look at this week's games. You guys have Weber State, Idaho State on the road. We'll take a look at Weber State first. Just considering your last matchup, what are some of the areas you guys need to improve to pick up a win this time? Well, we need to control their transition game because they, they just blitzed us in the first half. Um, got eight, I think uh, for the game they had 18 transition points, you know, and we lost by, I don't even, I can't remember how much we lost by, but we scored 54 points against them in the second half and cut it to, you know, four or five points. Uh, so it was, um, it was a key uh, for us, and it's going to be a key this Thursday is just their transition game. And Coach Weber State's lost three games in a row now. What are some of the areas you can attack in their game that they're kind of lacking lately? The big thing is we just got to play with intensity like we did on Thursday and Saturday and then last Saturday against Southern Utah. If we do that, we'll be fine. Uh, we'll, we'll be in the game. We'll be uh, competitive, and uh, that's probably the biggest key. Well, that's all the questions we have here this week, Coach. Good luck in the final games of the season, and uh, I'll see you at the Big Sky Tournament. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. For sure. We'll be back with Inside the Vandals. Hey, game day, Joe. Hey, uh, can you cover my shift tonight? Also, uh, expense reports at five. Thanks, man. You the man. And Zach, awesome to see the men start to really compete in these last three games, losing by nine to Southern Utah, two to Portland State, and then finally getting over the hill and beating Sacramento State. Let's hope they can pick up a couple more wins as they head into the Big Sky Conference Tournament next week. Yeah, it'd be awesome to see have some momentum going, like you said, into the conference tournament. But now looking back at the women's team, they had a lot of success. Everything's kind of clicking for them on all cylinders. Maybe there's a little something extra that's helping them with this winning streak. Let's take a closer look inside the women's program. Athletes, fans, and coaches have many ways of avoiding bad luck or getting out of slumps, and the Idaho women's team is no exception. When you have a record like they do, well, it might just be working. Well, I mean, we do have like a certain song that we usually play every year, and there was a Bruno Mars song. Once they found some 24 karat magic, picking one artist for the year became a ritual. We kind of latch onto one song and it will kind of be like our song the whole year, so it's kind of fun. A few individuals on the team take their routines even further. Taylor Pierce always has to have a candy bar before the game. Chocolate, peanuts, kind of healthy, so um, I just started doing it and then, you know, of course when you play well one game, you just, superstition says you just have to keep doing it for every game and then um, I've been doing it ever since, so. And the Snickers superstition has spread through the team. I didn't really notice that she did that and then she told me one day and I was like, I, I eat Snickers and so it's kind of funny that we both do that. The most interesting superstition on the team comes with a winning smile. I mean, I've kind of always been like obsessive about brushing my teeth. You know, before a game you got to make yourself look good and feel good so that you play good uh, and brushing my teeth just kind of helps me with that and then now it's just a superstition. For Inside the Vandals, I'm Ryan Morrison.
Well, it's like always interesting to see those personal rituals that individuals will have on teams just to get that slight edge if there is one at all. Yeah, hopefully that'll help them carry to another win here tonight along with Spirit Night, a little extra energy here in Cowan Spectrum. But coming up next, Idaho, Weber State, right here in Moscow. Doug Taylor with the call for Inside the Vandals. I'm Zach Kellogg. And I'm Braden Kane. We'll see you all next time.